During this year, the lecture series has been Creation Has Answers. The secular community does not know that creation can explain and can adequately explain all of the primary mysteries of the universe. In fact, at the back in the case are two leather-bound volumes. Uh, the one on top, the smaller one, is a replica of Principia. That is the book written by Sir Isaac Newton and written during his 20s. He solved all of the physics and the mysteries of the universe from that particular standpoint and he wrote Principia. He established the modern scientific movement. That was Sir Isaac Newton. But what most people do not understand is that as soon as he solved the universal physics, then he was preoccupied the rest of his life with what really interested him most. That is the study of the Bible, the Word of God. And then he wrote, and we have the larger edition at the bottom, is a first edition copy in the English language. Then he wrote the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. He recognized as the father of the modern scientific movement, he recognized that all of the truths he had discerned in physics, all of those truths that he had discerned came from the Bible, from the Word of God. So creation has always had answers from the beginning. So today we focus on creation has answers, the solar system. Now, the solar system is a beautiful arrangement. The uh, scriptures teach in a number of places that not only did God stretch out the heavens, but God spanned the universe. And the Hebrew word there, David Bassett and I were talking about that before lesson today. Uh, the Hebrew word there is symbolized by a sower sowing seed and spanning it out in a flat system. Now that's amazing. It didn't, uh, the solar system is not just splattered in place, but it is on a plane that is incredibly important to our way of life and our stability. And the scripture anticipated this all along. I wonder how many of you can uh, name these planets. Now, of course, the little blue dot right there. Now, of course, what is that planet? Uh, you can answer audibly. Earth. That's planet Earth. Now, what is that planet that is closest to the sun? Mercury. Mercury. And next, the planet that is most visible outside the sun and the moon. The uh, No, no, no. Venus. Venus, got it. Okay, Mars comes a little later. Uh, Mars isn't quite as visible. Venus is the brightest star, and biblically, planets are among the stars. They're called wandering stars. Uh, now, actually, Jupiter itself gives off more in radiation than it receives from the sun. So technically, Jupiter is a star even though it's a planet. Okay. So uh, now let's get back and see how many can name these. So uh, we have Mercury, we have Venus, we have the Earth, and uh, the next? Mars. Now we're to Mars. And then we have the largest of all the planets, that is Jupiter. It actually stabilizes between Jupiter and Saturn. Those two stabilize our orbit to make life possible. In between, we have the asteroid belt. You see all of those, the little spring of the asteroid belt. Astronomers and astrophysicists believe, and with good reason, that there was a planet in place there, Phaeton, and some call it Ceres, two different names it's referred to uh, historically. And apparently, it was about the size of the Earth. Uh, some of those chunks of space have been, uh, ch chunks of debris have been determined to be uh, heavy metals. So it had to be about the size of the Earth to support those heavy metals. Each of the planets is approximately twice the distance from the Sun as the preceding planet. And the asteroid belt is in that space and uh, it would have been twice the distance from the Sun as Mars 
and then of course Jupiter twice the distance from that space. And that brings us to Saturn. Early this morning, a little after six, I was reading some material on the rings of Saturn. Those rings are beautiful and in a sense musical. Now there was a time all of the planets give off sounds. This Early this week as I was preparing for this lecture, I downloaded an app. You can actually download an app on the sounds of the planets and listen to those planets. We had flybys, the Mariner Space Program did flybys and they recorded the sound of each of the planets. Uh, Jupiter has a specific sound, the Sun has a specific sound, a, a, an audible sound, and Jupiter and, and then Saturn. Now, what are these other two planets? Uranus, Uranus and Neptune. Okay, and then we have a little fellow out here who has been dethroned, Pluto. Pluto. The solar system is a beautiful place and we're going to learn today were it not for that solar system precisely placed as it is, you wouldn't be here. Something special is going on. So creation has answers, origin of the solar system. Is it a naturalistic origin? Is there evidence that it could have a creation oriented, placed itself naturalistically? Well, we're going to see. Or is there evidence that it was designed by a creator and every increment is specifically oriented as it should be for life, for your life? And are we going to find that not only is that the way we want it to be, but there was a record written centuries and centuries ago in an old book, normally with a black cover, not always with a black cover, in an old book that announced in advance that all that we're now observing in science, astrophysics and astronomy, was designed and described in advance.